I have left the management of mom's luggage to you. Mom said she feels lonely being alone and my commute is tough. I thought about a solution and I think the best thing is to have mom come live here. So I've decided for us to live with mom. The luggage will arrive on Saturday. So I'm counting on you to receive it. Suddenly, I received a phone call from my husband without any prior notice. There had been no consultation about this plan to live together. I haven't heard anything about this. It's troubling to have this living arrangement sprung on me like this. The spare room is practically a storeroom right now. How do you plan to handle this? Today is Tuesday, and I don't have any days off until Saturday, so there's no time to clean the room. As I objected, he said, Don't worry, it's fine even in that state. That's why I'm asking you. Mom will head your way on Sunday. Please take care of everything. My husband was making unilateral decisions. I felt my heart growing colder. If my husband was going to make important decisions on his own, then I had the right to make my own decisions. Okay, all right. I replied that way and ended the call. My name is Mandy. I live with Jeff, a classmate from middle school. After graduating from university, I started working in sales at an IT company. I lost my father to illness in my childhood and have lived with my mom ever since. Mom works clerical jobs at a small company during the day and has a side job at home at night. Despite coming from a single parent background, I had the same opportunities for lessons and education as other kids. After graduating and getting a job, I've come to appreciate how hard my mom has worked all these years and hope she can now enjoy her own time. In my sales job at an IT company, technical knowledge and sales skills are required, as well as building trust with clients. The knowledge I desperately learned is gradually bearing fruit and I am becoming trusted by customers. Currently, I am consistently among the top performers in sales. Since performance directly affects salary, I also feel a sense of accomplishment in my work. There are days so busy I hardly have time for lunch, but the effort ties directly to results, keeping me motivated. Reuniting with my husband was just a moment in my busy daily life. That afternoon, as I had a client visit planned, I was enjoying a cafe au late in the park. As I watched children play and sat on a bench, enjoying a peaceful moment, someone suddenly addressed me. Excuse me, are you Mandy? I'm sorry if I'm mistaken. He spoke as if he knew me, but I couldn't recall immediately. Yes, that's me. Worried that not remembering his name might be rude, I answered vaguely. You really haven't changed at all. A man in a delivery company uniform began a familiar conversation. It's me, we were classmates in middle school. Don't you remember? I transferred schools, but I'm Jeff. Jeff. He was a classmate from middle school. Jeff, the one who transferred. He always brightened up the class, being so good at sports and a central figure. Jeff, it's really been a while. I didn't recognize you at all. You're still as spaced out as ever, Mandy. His unchanged expression brought back old memories. Glancing at the clock, I saw that the time for my client appointment was approaching. Oh, sorry, I have to go now. I have work. As I started to leave, he stopped me and said, Mandy, if you're okay with it, give me your contact. Let's go out for a meal when you have time. Surprisingly, I happily agreed and exchanged contact information with him. Then I hurried off to my client. That encounter led to us often dining together, growing closer, and eventually discussing marriage. Meeting my in-laws for the first time was a very nerve-wracking experience. His family consists of his father, a stay-at-home mom, 
and Jeff himself. After introducing myself, I presented a gift from a confectionery shop near my workplace. I hope you will be satisfied with these treats from a confectionery shop near my office, however, my mother-in-law frowned and replied, we don't usually eat these. I apologized for the oversight right then. I should have checked beforehand. I am truly sorry. Inside, I was angry with him because he hadn't shared anything about his family's preferences in our discussions before the meeting. A slight unease remained in my heart. Later in the guest room, we talked about various things including how we met, our university days, and work. My father-in-law asked questions and nodded kindly. Eventually, the conversation shifted to my family background. I shared that I lived with my mother and that my father had passed away from illness when I was young. My mother-in-law's expression hardened. Mandy, you were raised by a single parent. She asked with a somewhat stern look. Yes, that's correct. Upon hearing my response, my mother-in-law remarked, it would have been better if Jeff's wife came from a more typical family background. You know, children raised by single parents often have personality or psychological issues because they lack love. It's pitiful, but it might be problematic for marriage. Such remarks shouldn't have been made in front of me. Looking to him for a response, I saw that he was just staring outside as if nothing had happened. In that moment, without his support, I responded to my mother-in-law with all my might. My mother raised me with all her effort. I have never felt inferior because I was from a single parent family. I emphasized this strongly. Tears welled up in my eyes. Honey, that's quite rude, don't you think? That's a prejudice. Then, my father-in-law interjected. There are many families with both parents where love is still lacking. Mandy has grown up to be such a wonderful person, what problems are you talking about? My father-in-law admonished my mother-in-law. Moreover, Mandy is a top performer in her sales role at an IT company. Her salary is quite substantial. Jeff needs to keep up, haha. With that, my father-in-law eased the chilly atmosphere. As we were leaving, my father-in-law said to me, Mandy, we will support you and Jeff. Families come in various forms, so please build your own unique family. Feel free to come to us anytime you need to talk. His words were incredibly comforting. Despite many uncertainties about the future, his words encouraged me, and I felt I could overcome them. We discussed and decided not to have a wedding ceremony. Instead, we planned a meal together with my in-laws, my mother, and my husband and me, five people in total. My father-in-law and my mother enjoyed a pleasant time throughout the meal. My mother-in-law, who had hardly greeted me properly, said during the meal, to be honest, I would have preferred Jeff's spouse to come from a typical family, not a single parent home. She added, children from single parent families often cling to money due to a lack of financial ease. Right after she said this, my father-in-law changed the topic. By the way, do you like oranges? He asked my mother. Yes, I love citrus fruits, my mother happily replied. A friend of mine lives in Florida and sends us a lot each year. Next time, we'll share some with you. My mother was delighted. That would be wonderful. Thank you. My father-in-law's tact saved the moment. Due to the noise in the restaurant, my mother either didn't notice or pretended not to hear and made no comment. After the meal, we walked through the bustling streets on our way home. Mom, I'm grateful for today. You must be tired, aren't you? No. I enjoyed the food and had a great time, she replied. The car headlights cast a slightly sad shadow on her face. Mandy, you are a daughter I am proud of. Thank you for growing up to be so kind. Don't be swayed by what others say and choose your own path together with Jeff. 
It's possible that my mother had heard the comments made by my mother-in-law. Considering that I was about to get married, she probably pretended not to hear anything to avoid causing me any trouble. I was moved by my mother's kindness and tears welled up inside me, but I smiled to hide my concern. A few days later, we completed our marriage registration and started our new life together. My husband moved into my spacious apartment, and our new family life began. My husband, who handles physically demanding delivery work, and I prepared nutritious meals on the evenings we spent together. As our days became busier and I had to work overtime more frequently, leaving no time to prepare dinner, my husband naturally began to take on the task of cooking. He often took care of house cleaning and laundry before I got home. We had not set specific roles, so things just progressed in this way. I felt a deep sense of happiness with how things were going. I never imagined Jeff would support our home so much. I'm truly grateful. With this, we'll be fine even if we have kids. When I mentioned this, my husband laughed and responded, when you get into it, it's surprisingly fun. Maybe it's about time I start learning about child rearing too. His reliable attitude gave me a sense of security. I felt this was the life we were building together, remembering my father-in-law's words. On weekends, my husband often went to his parents' home for meals because it makes my mother happy and he would ask me to arrange the ingredients. These included luxury items like high-grade beef and lobster from a popular shop. Visiting my husband's family was somewhat stressful for me, mostly because of my mother-in-law's complaints. She often complained about our daily lives. Is it true that Jeff is handling the cooking? Didn't you learn respect for your husband from your mother? Jeff does the laundry too? Even underwear? Don't you know any common sense because you were raised by a single parent? Do you need that much money? She would say harshly. However, every time, my father-in-law stood up for me. Wait a minute. That's not the right way to say things. You might not understand because you haven't worked, but working is stressful and requires a lot of mental energy. Especially in the IT industry, where there's always a demand for new technologies and products. Mandy is working hard. Thanks to her, we get to eat delicious meat, right? It wouldn't work so well with just Jeff, haha. This always lightened the mood. When I got home, my heart would be at ease. But that day was unexpected. As I was preparing to go to work as usual, we received the sudden news of my father-in-law's passing. Upon hearing the news, my husband went pale and was at a loss for words. I couldn't accept a reality immediately, and my mind went blank. It pained me that I couldn't repay my father-in-law's kindness before he passed away so suddenly. Thinking that I wouldn't see his smile anymore, tears involuntarily started to flow. After the funeral, concerned about my mother-in-law living alone, my husband began visiting his family home more frequently than before. I also accompanied him at times, but the frequent criticisms that you lack discernment because you were raised by a single parent and you can't even do this simple thing because you were raised by a single parent gradually made it harder for me to visit. On the other hand, my husband started going directly from work to his parents' house more often and he began not coming home at night. On the rare occasions he did come home, I hadn't prepared a meal because there was no prior notice. Perhaps influenced by his mother's words, I began to receive unfair criticism like you don't even have a meal ready when I come home. Is this because you were raised by a single parent? I finally understand what mom meant. Eventually my husband hardly ever came home. The drive between his workplace and his parents' home is about two hours. While I understand his concern for his mother, the long hours of driving after work and early morning commutes made me worry about his health. 
Before I knew it, I hadn't seen my husband in a month. Then one day, when I returned home after a long time, I received a call from my husband. Mandy, how are you? I'm fine. Rather, Jeff, aren't you the one who's tired? His voice was as lively as ever, despite not having heard it in a long time. To be honest, I'm tired of the recent lifestyle. Do you have any plans this Saturday? Saturday? No, I don't have anything planned. Suddenly, I optimistically thought about going somewhere since it had been a while. I have left the management of Mom's luggage to you. Mom feels lonely living alone, and my commute is tough. I thought about a solution, and I think the best option is to have Mom move over. So, I've decided for us to live with Mom. The luggage will arrive on Saturday, so please take care of it. He didn't consult with me about this at all. I haven't heard anything about this. It's troubling to have this living arrangement sprung on me like this. The spare room is practically a storeroom now. What do you plan to do about it? Today is Tuesday, and I don't have any days off until Saturday, so there's no time to clean the room. As I objected, he said, don't worry, it's fine even in that state. That's why I'm asking. Mom will head your way on Sunday. I'm really counting on you. Jeff's it's okay often isn't reliable. Does he even remember when we introduced ourselves for marriage? Mom will be tired from the move, so I need you to help with organizing the luggage. I have a training and a business trip this Friday, and I plan to do some sightseeing with colleagues. I won't be back until next Monday, so I can't return home in the meantime. Please handle it. Leaving all the care of his mother to me while he goes sightseeing. I felt my feelings for him cooling down. If my husband can make decisions about living together on his own, I also have the right to make my own decisions. Are you serious? Despite my question, he hung up the call. Then, on the day the mother-in-law's luggage was to arrive, the doorbell rang and the delivery man asked, Is this the right place for the luggage delivery? How much is there? As the delivery man checked the manifest, he answered, it seems to be a variety of sizes, but there are a total of 100 items. 100 items. That seems a bit much, but whatever. It's fine, just leave it anywhere. I had two delivery workers handle the 100 boxes, and then I left the apartment. While I was out walking, I received a call from my husband. Mandy, has mom's luggage arrived? Yes, there are 100 pieces. They're already in the room. The situation was extremely frustrating. It's always about his mother. He's a true mommy's boy. 100 pieces? That's too much luggage. Please handle the unpacking. Make sure everything is relaxing for when mom arrives. Why should I have to do it? Actually, Jeff, I've moved out. What? It seemed he didn't understand. So, I can't do the unpacking. What? What about mom? An elderly person can't unpack alone. Is that kind of selfishness allowed just because you were raised by a single parent? There it was again, the single parent comment. I couldn't stand his condescending attitude. Jeff, you were the one who unilaterally decided about your mom moving. That's why I moved on my own, too. I no longer wanted to be with this family. Also, about your mom's luggage, I don't think it needs to be unpacked. What do you mean? There was panic in his voice. I've terminated the apartment lease at the end of this month, so moving is inevitable. Can your salary even cover the rent? Let's calm down and talk. What exactly is going on? My actions after making the decision were surprisingly quick. I ended the call with my husband on Tuesday, immediately called my mother to explain the situation, and the next day, I contacted several moving companies online for quotes 
and took short-term leave from work. The company with the best terms responded quickly, provided the necessary boxes, and I signed up for their service right away. The moving day was set for the following Thursday afternoon during the off-season. I started packing immediately, discarding unnecessary items from the room I had lived in for years. I packed all night and, after a short rest, resumed work at dawn. I managed to finish everything by the morning of the moving day. The rest of the work was left to the movers. The next day, I contacted the real estate office to complete the apartment vacating process. When I explained these past few days' actions to my husband, he was so shocked that he couldn't say anything. I seized the opportunity to continue speaking. Actually, I'm on my way back to my parents' house. The only things left in the apartment are your personal belongings you brought at the time of our marriage and the 100 boxes. The newly arrived boxes haven't even been opened yet. So they can be returned as they are. I can no longer tolerate your excessive dependency on your mother. If you think a woman raised by a single parent is unsuitable as a wife, let's divorce as you wish. Please contact me through a lawyer for future matters. I'm about to board the train. So goodbye. My husband was shouting something on the other end of the phone, but I didn't care and ended the call. When I safely arrived at my parents' house, my mother welcomed me warmly. The next day, while enjoying a late breakfast with my mother, the doorbell rang. With a sense of dread, I answered it, and my husband pleaded, Mandy, it was us who were wrong. Please hear us out. My husband continued knocking on the door forcefully. Not wanting to cause a disturbance in the neighborhood, I reluctantly opened the door, and there stood my husband and mother-in-law, who immediately began to apologize profusely. Mandy, we apologize for our actions. We didn't intend to make you suggest divorce. We humbly ask you to please reconsider. Both my husband and mother-in-law apologized as sincerely as they could. Mandy, if you leave, it's the end for us. Please reconsider. Even with their pleas, I looked down on them coldly and declared, It's too late. No matter how much you apologize, the hurt I felt won't heal. I've suffered from being labeled as someone raised by a single parent. You're just worried about losing my income because your own is too low, aren't you? I want nothing more to do with you two. Now, leave. They were frozen by my resolute words. If you continue to stay here, I'll have to call the police. They left in haste, fearing the police. Our divorce was finalized swiftly after that. According to my lawyer, my ex-husband made an inadvertent slip of the tongue during a training session at work, which caused a significant rift with his supervisor and ultimately led to his job loss. His continued inappropriate comments about his boss's family background directly caused his dismissal. He was very reluctant about the divorce while unemployed, but when I hinted at paying compensation, he grudgingly agreed. Meanwhile, my former mother-in-law is determined to find a proper family girl for her son, despite him being unemployed and desiring to live with his mother. Realistically, Few women find an unemployed man living with his mother appealing. Currently, they live near my former-in-law's house, and the story of our divorce has spread in the neighborhood, causing them to lead a low-profile life due to the shame. During this time, I've been living with my mother, focusing on my work. The incident caused a lot of worry for her, so I intend to support her fully from now on. Another very important person to me is my late father-in-law. On the anniversary of his death, I visit his grave with coffee, his favorite drink during his lifetime. The grave is always unkempt, clearly neglected by my ex-husband and his family. They probably can't manage even that due to their hectic lives. 
In such circumstances, I carefully clean the grave, offer the coffee, and pray quietly.